It's acres and move makers. It's acres and move makers. I deal with land flippers, acres and move makers, room shakers, big boys with huge paper, the news tapers. You can run but can't escape us. We went in with these. Flash green when they act racist. Success is so contagious. Let's go. It's acres and move makers. Welcome to Acres and Move Makers. My name is Ray. My name is Jay. And we are the Acre Boys. Today we <clears> want to <throat> talk about how fast does land sell? You know, when that's a, a touchy subject, right? Because uh, clearly everybody wants their land to sell completely fast, right? Everybody wants that. Everybody wants to make the money as soon as possible. I think we all do. That's our natural nature as humans, right? Get the money fast. But however, you have to put into your mind are you buying the right piece of property, right? See, if you're not situated as a real land investor, I'm going to say, you need to know what markets that you're entering first and foremost, right? One of the major things that we're going to check <clears throat> on that is you got to check to see what the market is doing. So let's just say, pull one out of the, out of the air. We're investing in Ohio, right? In Ohio, in a, in a certain county, whatever the case may be, how long are property staying on the market? That's you you have to you have to know these things right because if you don't know how long properties are staying on that actual market it's going to be very very challenging it's like you gambling you're taking dice and just rolling it right but if you study that prior to investing you'll understand a lot more <clears throat> about it right so days on market are simply this how long properties are staying on the market versus how long they take to be sold anytime that we see a ratio what is more for sale property than sold property, that's a key indicator to us that that's not the right market for us, right? We want to ensure that properties are selling inside of that market, and that's going to be huge as far as selling your property, right? Because when you talk about this, right, we have, we have sold property in as little as hours to as long as three to four months, right? And the reason why we might have hold on to that property for three or four four months, you have to consider pricing as well, right? Because sometimes you may be trying to get everything out of the property, all of the juice, whatever the case may be. Real time example, right? We bought a property for twenty thousand dollars. The property is worth fifty thousand, right? Now, if we price it at the top of the market, and there's other properties that are at the top of the market for fifty thousand dollars. Generally, I'm going to have to compete with all of those other properties because they're all priced the same, right? I'm going to have to compete. However, if you wanted to sell a little bit faster, what I would do is depend on how you want to, how long you want to actually hold on. I would drop that price down a little bit, right? Forty-five thousand, because what's that's going to do? That is going to actually put more eyes on your property because it's cheaper with the same amenities and everything. So when the actual buyer goes to look at, at these properties, right, and they're all comparable and yours is cheaper, cheaper of course, you're going to go ahead and get the uh, and get most of the eyes on your property because you're the cheapest inside of the marketplace. So from personal experience, as Jay stated, we've sold property as fast as three hours and we had properties that sat on the market for months. Um, I will say when you buy it right, it usually sells. Uh, pretty fast. I will say the better the property, the faster the property will sell. Mm -hmm. I will say that with all properties, if they're decent properties, they always sell at some point. Even if it takes a while, they always, always sell. Mm -hmm. As the investor, your job is to make sure that you're taking the necessary steps for it to have the best or highest probability of being so fast. And what yeah. do those steps look like? That's look like look like making you have make sure you have the best pictures or best photos of your property, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure if it's a, a, a property of a certain price point, you have drone shots. Make sure that you have uh, a good realtor that's on the property. Um, one of the fastest ways to sell properties is to have a buyer's list. Mm -hmm. So if you have a buyer's list 
in place already, you can just simply shoot that new property that you own to your buyer's list and say, hey, I have another one. Or another thing you could do with a buyer's list is ask them what they're looking for. What areas are they looking for? Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to get in, we don't get into to pinpointing things that people are looking for. For sure. We just go after what we're looking for and then we put it out there. But we have seen that work for other people, right? Especially when you're dealing with infill lots and builders because builders are one of the most attractive clients that you could sell an infill lot to. So if you have a, a property or a builder that you have sold to before, you have a conversation <coughs> with him, are you looking to buy more in this area? Common sense would say, let's look for more properties in this area. You can just shoot it to that builder without even listing the property on the market because he probably would want that property again, being that he's a builder in that area. Wow. So you just have to make sure you're taking the correct <coughs> steps to give your property the highest probability to sell fast. And that's making good listing, good write-up, good photos, drone shots if necessary for that property, mm -hmm. and a good realtor. And a good realtor would have some of these things in place. They'll Nobody have a buyer list, yeah, sure. and they'll have an audience that they shoot their, <clears throat> their, their listings out to. So that's really all that we can do. Nothing is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. um, and then you wait for it to sell. You know, that's the beauty of it. Yeah, for sure. So, and know what you're targeting, right? You know, uh, due diligence, due diligence, due diligence. We can't, you know, harp on that enough. Are you looking for recreational property? Are you looking for industrial property? Are you talking to the land brokers in those areas to find out, like my partner said, what's in demand? Like, it's one thing to go ahead and just shoot, like, oh, I'm going to buy a piece of land or buy this, but how do you know it's in demand in that particular place? Because it's all different. Kind. It could be mobile home property, it could be zoned for a lot of different things. And one thing when it comes to uh, land brokers, and anybody who is not familiar with what land brokers are, they are, are just, uh, they are realtors, but they specifically deal in land. Most of the times, you're, we're going to want to deal with those, deal with them. Some people are hybrids where they deal with both, but most specifically, we like to deal with the ones that are dealing with land. And I like to ask them a lot of key questions because keep in mind, they are not giving us anything. We are giving them the money. We are giving them an actual listing. And the expectation is that you actually perform based off of what I'm giving you. So some of the key things that I would ask that realtor is, how many deals have you done within the last year? That's going to speak to your experience and your volume, right? How many deals have you done? What are the specific steps that you go through in order to go ahead and get this property sold? Because what we'll find, if you run into a horrible realtor, let me tell you exactly what they're going to do. They're going to take your contract. You're going to go ahead and sign that over. They're going to slap it on an MLS and wait for it to sell, and they won't do anything else. But if you don't know to ask these questions prior to, you can go ahead and get a lot of this stuff sorted out in the beginning. The most horrible thing you could do is take on an actual land broker and you don't know their actual capabilities. You didn't set expectations from the beginning. So they feel that they can treat you any kind of way. Call you when they want. What we do when it comes to this stuff, we request, actually we demand, never mind a request, Every week, we want status about how that listing is doing, how many people called, how many inquiries, whatever the case may be, because there is a honeymoon period when it comes to these properties. Typically, when people see these properties and they're interested, that is the right ideal time in order for you to strike a deal. You already know, if you've been following us, we're buying these properties for 25, 30 to 40 percent on a dollar. So we have room as far as adjusting down. Now, it goes to us how long do we want to hold on to these properties do we want to come in and make a quick flip do we want to go ahead and wait so we can get almost market value most times we go ahead and uh sell the property below market value because we have so much room as far as equity inside of that deal get in and get out that's the philosophy of the acre boys yes sir so if you find this content to be valuable like comment subscribe all that help us grow this channel we'll continue to give you um as much as free value as we possibly can so until the next time invest in dirt it's the cleanest way to make money peace y'all